In Maine, Northeast America, lives a family that carries a deadly burden. In every generation, half of them face an early and traumatic death. But they don't know who it will strike, or when. It's an awful thing to watch. Here they're watching their father, and then this could happen to them. Joanne White recently lost her husband to the disease, and now her children face the same fate. This could be me. I just live every day for what it is, because you don't know. You don't know. Just 30 families in the world are known to carry the killer gene. It was discovered by an Italian doctor who witnessed its unique and devastating effects. They are overcome by hallucinations, by bursts of dreams, by a deadly tiredness, and then they die. The victims yearn for sleep, but are condemned to perpetual insomnia. Now Joanne is taking her children to California, where they can find out if they carry the lethal gene. I know this is really hard. And to help find a cure, before they are struck down too. 30 seconds left, Megan. Keep going. The human brain cannot function without sleep. It's as vital to it as food and drink. The brain itself is about 3% of our total body weight, but it uses up about 25% of our oxygen and our food. It's like a highly tuned, very fast racing engine, uh, and uh, it can't really relax to any extent in wakefulness. Uh, and the only way it can go offline or relax to any extent for a necessary rest is in sleep. But there's one disease whose sufferers are totally deprived of sleep. They're condemned to inhabit a dreadful limbo between sleep and wake, until finally their bodies give up. For centuries, they were simply thought to be mad and condemned to die in lunatic asylums. But the mysterious condition now has a name, thanks to the dedication of one man on a personal crusade. In Italy, finding a cure for the disease is the life work of Dr. Ignazio Reuter, for 30 years, he's watched it wreak havoc on a family in Venice who've been so devastated by it that they keep their identity secret. Dr. Reuter has been trying to discover how long the disease has been stalking them. The family has lived in the Venice area since about 1500. Whether the illness goes back that far, nobody knows. As the family dispersed, the pattern of their untimely deaths passed unnoticed. The records show that some died young, from depression it was said, or other mysterious causes. But they never made a connection between these deaths. The disease is so rare and so hard to diagnose that it has only recently acquired a name. Fatal familial insomnia. Dr. Reuter first witnessed its curious symptoms in 1974, when a woman from the affected family came to his surgery. She was complaining of giddiness, and she walked unsteadily. But at that stage, it never occurred to me that it might be a neurological illness, or one so terrible. The disease robbed her of all control over her body. After nine months, unable to swallow or speak, she died. Two years later, her sister began to suffer the same disturbing symptoms. The most striking was a complete inability to sleep. No one can imagine, not even I who've witnessed it, what it's like to be completely deprived of sleep. To have only tiny chaotic fragments of sleep, being totally at its mercy, and to die utterly exhausted. Observing the two sisters' unusual but identical symptoms, the doctor drew an alarming conclusion. Clearly, the illness was genetic. 
In Maine, in the northeastern corner of the USA, is a family coming to terms with the same chilling realization. Three years ago, the white children lost their father, Rick, to fatal familial insomnia. It was a shock to the whole community. We lost a co-worker and a friend last night. Rick White was our assistant news director. We were blessed to have a good friend who made every day that he was here better. Two years earlier, former cameraman Rick White had become the news assignment editor at his local TV station in Bangor, Maine. He'd been at the peak of his mental powers. We work with rigid deadlines. We have several newscasts, a morning, a noon, two night, uh, three night newscasts. Rick was the guy behind that. He was, he was the brains behind that. 22, they're putting that clock up today. So we'll have a VO from there. But after just a year, Rick White seemed to be drifting. Michael was going up to Orono today. He'd have days where he just really wasn't there. He, he didn't, um, didn't contribute. He did not uh, stay focused. At one point, he came to me and apologized for being off his game, he said. And at that point, I thought, he's either ill physically in some way, you know, maybe he has a cold or something. I noticed there was a tickle in his throat. He coughed a lot. At home, Rick's children were increasingly disturbed by their father's persistent cough. The cough just didn't go away, and then he started having pains in his legs. And then just, they think they'd all just come together. It was bizarre that nothing was working. And I don't know, something inside of me went off and said, this is it. Dad's got it. She was right to be dismayed. Her dad had the illness that had killed many in their family before him. We knew that he wasn't going to get better. It was, it's just hard to know that and then not really be able to do anything about it. Nine months after he caught the cough that wouldn't go away, Rick White died. When Rick was sick, the kids were, you know, I got thinking, here they're watching their father, and then this could happen to them. Now their mother, Joanne, has embarked on a mission to discover more about the disease and to find out what chance there is of a cure being found in time to save her children. Fatal familial insomnia is a deadly brain disease that lies dormant in its victims for up to 50 years. Once it becomes active, it's unstoppable. It condemns its victims to perpetual sleeplessness until it kills them. It was first noticed only 30 years ago in a family from Venice. Even then, its symptoms were a mystery. But after seeing two sisters from a family die from it, Dr. Ignazio Reuter suspected it was genetic. In his quest for evidence, he went to the island of San Servolo, a mile off the Venetian coast, to search the archives of one of Italy's first lunatic asylums. From talking to relatives, I found that at least one ancestor, and maybe more, had been treated there, believed to be murdered. The archive contains daily reports on all those who were treated here. With help from the curator, Dr. Reuter found medical records for family members dating back to the 1800s. They described symptoms that echoed those he had seen in the two sisters. Disorientato nel tempo, la sua attenzione è esauribile. Il paziente è goffo e lento nei movimenti. How this illness could wind like a serpent through the generations without ever being noticed is a historical mystery. The ancient records seem to confirm it was genetic. But to investigate it further, Dr. Reuter would have to wait until the deadly disease struck the family again. In Maine, the White family know from Dr. Reuter's research that the disease which killed their father runs in their genes. At least 15 of their relatives have died from it, yet the family has never spoken about the dark secret that threatens them all.